quote, it is the frivolous elevation of the critical attitude into a categorical imperative of intellectual life, which has been the most mischievous aspect of Popper's philosophy of science. The apotheosis of the critical attitude has had, as its principal effect, simply this, to fortify millions of ignorant graduates and undergraduates in the belief that the adversary posture is all and that intellectual life consists in directionless quibble, unquote. So said Australian artist, pundit, and philosopher David Stove. In the Electric Universe Saturnian reconstruction of the Golden Age, the no eight equals night language development pattern gives stark and telling support. This is just one of the impressive blocks of evidence for the Saturnian reconstruction of ancient times. The influence that it had on the development of verbal sound symbol language is dramatic. Yet this is just one aspect of what is known as the fall at the end of the golden age. Others would be the destruction of the Edenic environment, the almost total loss of telepathic communication, and a quadrupling of the field of gravity on the Earth, which essentially staggered and smothered most of the land-based megafauna into extinction for being too heavy to operate in the new environment. In about 20 languages, maybe more, there is an undeniable pattern where the word for night is a contraction of the two words no and eight. Is this just a coincidence? Not a chance. But why should this be? To begin with, most of the languages are derivatives of Indo-European or Sanskrit. Thus, we can sort of expect the pattern derived from the preceding language. What is amazing is the way it plays out. In some of these languages, the words and their sounds are changed significantly, but the pattern still holds. The substantive solution here is understanding the historical basis for this equation pattern. During the end phase of the Golden Age, previous to the Great Age-Ending Catastrophe or Cataclysm, Mankind on Earth lived under the glorious spectacle in the sky of the Saturnian polar configuration, where, looking to the north, one could see the reddish Mars in front of the larger blue-green Venus in front of the significantly greater golden orb of Saturn. The salient aspect here is that Venus cycled back and forth toward and away from Saturn on the polar axis of the Saturn-Venus-Mars-Earth alignment. In the electric universe paradigm, these planets would all be larger with Saturn greater than the others. On its cyclical journey, Venus discharged back to Saturn with a specific but varying number of coruscating streams of Birkeley current plasma. On its inward bound leg toward Saturn, starting from its most distant point, the streamers went from 0 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 8 and finally to 16 according to the aspects of plasma discharge and the mytho-historical record. Evidently, the stages of 4 and 8 were the most prolonged and prominent. Consequently, the visible form of Venus was widely known as the eight-pointed star in the ancient world. David Talbot claims that some ancient civilizations, the word radiance was represented numerically by the number 8, and thus by implication, no 8 would represent no radiance coming from the streamers. The periodic eight-pointed star overhead was a glorious spectacle, a brilliant source of light, and it dominated the sky. The Saturnian polar configuration finally broke up, inaugurating the great catastrophe known as the Biblical Flood, and this happened when the Saturnian system was pulled into the plane of the ecliptic, 
Consequently, the Earth no longer received the constant light from Saturn and the variable light from Venus. Thus, the total darkness of night was first experienced and was referred to as Noate and Noel, the name of the Saturnian god. Let me give a partial list of the Noate pattern. In English, the dark part of our current daily cycle is called night, where the negative no is combined with the word eight. In Indo-European or Sanskrit, night is nekote, where the negative is ne. In Afrikaans, the negative is ni, and eight is oct, thus giving the contraction not. In Danish, the negative is nej, eight is ote, thus giving not. In Dutch, combining the negative gien with eight as oct gives noct or noct. French has nuit, combining the negative non when eight is wheat. In German, night is noct, the negative is nine, eight is oct. In Koine Greek, night is nux or nuktos, the negative is non, and eight is octo. Italian, night is notte, the negative is no, eight is otto. Latin, night is nox or noctus, the negative is non, eight is octos. Norwegian, the negative is nes. Eight is ate and night is not. Portuguese, the negative is now. Eight is oito, night is a noite. Romanian, the negative is new. Eight is opt and night is nopte. In Spanish, night we know as noche, the negative is no and eight is ocho. In Swedish, night is not, the negative is ne, and eight is ota. It also works in Russian, Ukrainian, Chinese, and Welsh. Related support for the pattern is found thusly. In Japanese, night equals yoru, no equals ai, eight equals yatsu. As you can see, the Noate pattern is not so clear here. The word stay in Japanese is oru, pronounced oru. So, if anything, the Japanese word for night, yoru, is a contraction of ioru, maybe giving no stay. But even that seems to have clear connection. Let me give an analogy. The European languages that we have now are kind of like 20 pipes that we are told are coming from a central tank. Coming from the end of the pipes are the word sounds for night of the current languages, and the tank is labeled either Indo-European or Proto-Indo-European. According to my understanding of what has been suggested to me by sources, if we find various shades of bluish water coming from all the 20 pipes, that is a pattern, although a simple one. If we trace the pipes to the central tank, we are almost certain that the tank holds bluish water, and it is getting modified in the pipes. We check in the tank and, sure enough, find blue water. No problem. Now, if we had just or only looked into the tank and found blue water, that would not have been a pattern because it takes at least two or more things to make a pattern. But even if only 15 of the 20 pipes are delivering bluish water and the others are delivering plain water, that is still a pattern, but not a total consistent one. Obviously, either these pipes are not connected to the same tank or... Something is being added to the 15 or subtracted from the 5. So far, this is somewhat of an oversimplification. My understanding of what we find is that sometimes the words of one language do not all take the same route to the end language. 
Words are borrowed from different languages and new words are created at or in each level or intermediate language. And some words are changed to varying degrees. For instance, some may have gone from Indo-European to Greek to Latin to German to Old English to Modern English, some from Indo-European to Latin to Greek to whatever and some from Indo-European skipping over some usual intermediates. However, notice this corroborating evidence in Japanese. Ho means direction, shi equals four, and hoshi equals star. Probably just as enduring in the ancient sky was the discharge of four streamers back to Saturn from Venus. And this at times presented a kind of giant square in the sky, defining the land of the gods. Sometimes this was referred to as the four corners of the earth or the cosmos, which is often mistranslated as the four corners of the earth. Knowing this now makes our construction quite expected and meaningful. On the matter of eight, it turns out that the key is not eight streams, but four streams. If you take all of the associations of the number eight around the world, you will find that more of these associations relate to projecting lines of energy around the center than to all other associations combined. Moreover, there is a recurring association with the equal-limbed cross or iron cross. Repeatedly, you find the four arms or streamers of the cross duplicated symmetrically to produce a balanced eightfold division of space in a circle. An early example is the sun wheel of Shamash in which the four streamers as winds or rivers are juxtaposed with what looks like petals of a flower, another mythical form of the same streamers, producing a sense of symmetry or balance. In more than one culture, male and female aspects of this equal-limbed cross yield balanced eightfold set of rays or spokes. Remember that the conjunction of Mars and Venus at the center of the cross is the archetypal conjunction of male and female powers, inviting balanced or symmetrical elaborations of the elementary idea. There is much more in terms of verbal language being associated or derived from the Saturnian formation in the ancient sky. It would probably fill a library if all of the similar linguistic connections in all of the extant languages and other cultural practices were to be thoroughly researched, noted, and cataloged. This pattern of many common words and phrases being related to the imposing formation in the ancient sky would seem to be undeniable. To summarize, This all adds up to one more big reason for both the Electric Universe model and the Saturnian reconstruction to challenge not only the plethora of the world's variations of Saturn worship, but also the modern mythology of mainstream academic conception of the ancient times. The modern mythology is stark denial of a short chronology and the recent major changes in the solar system over the last few thousand years. It is not a good thing for modern mankind to be in such denial of the most impactful era of our entire history.